Okay, so hi everyone, my name is Richard Ralphs from Redbox Recorders. Um, first of all, thanks to Mitel for hosting us today, and secondly to Britannic, our partners, uh, for inviting us along to talk you through mobile recording. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, go through some of the motivations of why people want to record in the first place, um, and also why they want to specifically record mobile phones, some of the legislation behind it. Um, I'm quite a practical technical guy as well, I know there's some technical people here with me with us today I've spoken to before we started, so I'm going to go through the practicalities of how you deploy this as well, um, and then as I said I'm going to put my neck on the block and give you a live demonstration of this working as well. Okay, a little bit about Redbox before us, some of you will know us, um, Mears, you, you're here today I believe, guys, yeah, hi. Your system is up and running, okay? Uh, they've actually had their installation done this week. Um, I've just got the email beforehand saying that everything's up, running, and, and fine, so uh, we're ready for their training now. Uh, for those of you who don't know us, we're a UK-based organisation based out of Nottingham. Um, we've been manufacturing core recorders for over 20 years. Um, we've been OEMing them out to other suppliers in the past, like Raycor, Talis, and nice and around eight years ago we brought all that intellectual property back to a company called Redbox Recorders which we created and took to market um, and that's helped us establish partnerships with the likes of Mitel, uh, with RIM um, and obviously with Britannic, uh, one of our key resellers and key partners. Um, we have done very well uh, since we created Redbox and came to market ourselves and um, we've been recognised as one of the companies to watch uh, we're in the Times Tech Track 100, um, who our marketing manager is very proud of, Karen here. Um, we're 94, okay, so we're not number one, um, but when you realise that's over for, out of 100,000, um, even I think it's maybe even more than that, uh, people who apply for that, we're, we're a good story for the UK at the moment in these difficult times. Okay, so over those 20 years, we've met a lot of clients <coughs> in all the different sectors who use us for call recording. Um, traditionally, finance is obviously uh, very important for us. They have a compliance regulation they have to adhere to for recording. Um, but large call centres as well, um, contact centres, and obviously flexible workers who are making decisions on the phone who need those recorded uh, for dispute purposes. And government, local government, who are obviously have to deploy, deploy contact centres um, widely at the moment. One of our proudest, I guess it's a boast, is that uh, we do 40% of UK police forces in the UK. So obviously our solutions are highly resilient and highly reliable um, for those clients. And when we've been seeing all these different sorts of clients, we've had to record lots of different environments. Okay, so we, we've dealt with traditional customers who've got analog systems, we've got digital systems out there, ISDN, VoIP, SIP, even radio systems. So what I'm trying to get over today is that this is just one element of our recording solutions. Part of that has been accrediting with Mitel, so everything that Lisa's just gone through, we can actually record as well, so all these different flexible solutions. And we're actually a, co a company that likes to encourage virtualization as well. Very similar story to Mitel and their VMware story in the hosted environment. Now, Lisa, Lisa did go over quite a few of the points on the flexible working, so when we sit down in our different buildings and we hot desk, when we're teleworking from home, and obviously when we're using our mobile devices, we're actually able to record all of those using the one solution, which is Quantify. And Quantify is a modular set of applications which we use to meet everyone's specific business needs. Now we start off with a core set of modules which is search, replay and live monitor. So no matter what you're recording, this is the core element you come into. This is where you find your calls, you listen to your calls, you replay your calls and you configure your system. So if you're recording mobile calls, you can live monitor your mobile calls. If someone's working remotely, you can listen to their calls live as well. So it's very flexible in the core of the application. Then as your, as your requirements develop, you may want to actually listen back to the calls and do assessments of people within contact centre to find best practices and identify training needs. And that's when we implement quality management for you. As well as that, we can look at screen recording as well, so mixing the audio and the video together. So we've got both levels of interaction joined together. PCI compliance, is anybody familiar with PCI compliance and PCI issues at the moment? Okay, I guess a few of you, I see a few heads nodding. Um, payment cards industry, data security standard. 
states that you, if you're actually recording your calls, you must stop recording when you're taking those payment details. Now that, that can be quite tricky, um, but we've developed certain applications straight out of the box when we can recognise what activity is going on on your agents, so where they're actually taking payments and stop and start recording during those calls. As well as that, you might be taking lots of different types of calls, so we've event reconstruction, so you can package all those different calls together in a case and send them off to your colleagues. Then we do call management, and audio an analytics is kind of at the highest end of our, of our customers' needs. So this is when we can actually index all the audio that you've received. So no, again, no matter what source, we can index the words and phrases and help you search on them, help spot trends. Okay? And finally, mobile recording, which I'll go on to now. But we've got all this with us today, um, which we can show you. So we can actually show you speech analytics working um, and indexing calls. So come and see himself, Tony or Karen afterwards, and we can we can show that to you. So what are the motivations behind call recording? The, the key thing is compliance, and this is where it all started off. So the Financial Services Authority um, have been trying for a long time to get the mobile phones recorded of all the traders in the city. The legislation started around two years ago. Um, and finally, on November the 14th, the deadline came, and around 25,000 mobiles of the traders in the city had to be recorded by that date. Now, not everybody decided they were going to record them. A lot of them took all the mobile phones back off their traders, okay? You know what these people are like, I guess. Um, so we've had to take a good proportion of those customers and develop a solution for them, and that's what I'm going to show you today. But equally, coming out of that, we've seen other demands for, for mobile call recording. Along the professional services, such as the Solicitors Regulatory Authority, they've actually started to issue guidelines around the interactions they're having with their clients and whether they should be recorded too. And one of the key reasons for recording in any environment is dispute resolution. So who said what to who? What was agreed? What did we say we were going to do? This is what you said, no, I said this. So particularly again in solicitors, but especially in health practitioners as well, when they're giving advice to patients. So GPs, doctors, consultants, when they're issuing instructions over the mobile phone for patient care. As well as that, senior management when they're getting calls. One of the interesting stats I looked up before, before I came today was that 70% of us who own, a, who own a smartphone are actually taking calls outside hours regularly. So not all of us, as Jonathan said at the start of this, the talk today, we're all working longer hours. So senior management, they're taking calls on escalations, on customer issues, on contracts, on HR issues, so you can record those as well. And obviously then in business continuity, when everything goes wrong, when you have to back up to your mobiles or your flexible working solutions, we can record those environments too. Interesting story, I live in the Midlands, we had an escaped prisoner go through a nice young gentleman called Mr Skits. That, that meant I wasn't going to leave the house around by me for at least two or three hours until Mr Skits was safely out of my area. So I was on the mobile working from home all day while they tried to round him up. So you just never know what's going to happen. So going into the nuts and bolts of how this fits together, um, you have two solutions which you can, which you can implement for recording your mobiles. You have a conference-based solution. So this is where, when a call is made from your mobile, it will actually call the other party and it will actually call a recorder and it will answer the phone and then join the parties together. Secondly, you have an anchoring solution from the likes of Obsidian or MVS, which was mentioned early, earlier by Lisa from REM. Um, so in that instance, all the calls from the mobile are actually diverted through a mobile intercept gateway by your carrier, and then we intercept that gateway, and then it goes on to your regular user or the caller who you've tried to call. I'll go on to show you the call flows of those in a second, but I'm going to concentrate on QMR first of all, which is quantified mobile recording. So how does this work? Well, so it was all developed by Redbox. Um, so it's our own software, so it all fits our own regular licensing models that you recognise if you were using fixed telephony or if you are recording agents or teleworkers or what have you. And it not only captures what you're doing on the phone in audio, it captures SMSs as well as I'll show you. Um, and RIM are right behind this as well on the BlackBerry side, we have Android coming out very soon. Um, so basically what happens when you make a call, the first number that the the handset calls is the recorder on a DDI number. The recorder automatically answers this call and then it will call your second party, join the two together and we've got the call recorded. 
okay? works from a little application which is deployed onto the BlackBerry or the, or the device. Okay, when you've recorded all your calls, what you want to do, you want to look at them. So you use the quantify system, so I've got the quantify up here, and this is showing all my calls, the search criteria I've searched for, and then the calls replaying in the window down here. And that's the same for text as well, so if you want to search for your text, then you can find all your text through the quantify window. So going into the nuts and bolts, I know there's some technical people here, so hopefully they'll like the way this looks. Very straightforward. All we need is trunk lines coming into the recorder, obviously for the DDI numbers to call in, or SIP channels. Uh, Britannica are obviously very keen on um, talking to you about SIP and the advantages of using SIP instead of ISDN. So, uh, and what we've found so far is that, that around 90% of our clients are deploying this type of scenario where we're getting a SIP trunk coming from your existing infrastructure, hopefully the Mitel system. So when a call comes in, we just get a feed straight from your, your existing telephony. So not a great deal needs to change there. Or alternatively, we can have the, the ISDN trunks going straight to the recorder. Uh, not so popular, we think, because of the, the extra rental on the lines um, this, and the extra cards that are required in the recorder. But as I mentioned at the start, a typical kind of solution isn't just mobile. There's the odd customer that's come for mobile recording solely, but most customers are, are extending what they're doing at the moment. So they're looking at existing extension users, hot desk users, agents, and teleworkers, and we record that very straightforwardly through the Mitel Secure Recording Connector. And then we get all of the events from what's called Mitel. So that tells us who's <coughs> moving where, who's using which device. So all this mobility that was mentioned earlier we can track that using this secure recording connector and the MyTai events. So we just follow that person around the network and we can record them and then you can replay any of their calls from any of their locations. And then we can add in the mobile as well by using the QMR solution. Okay. So deployment, very straightforward. We just have to use our interface to send the, the actual application out to the device device then loads up on their on their BlackBerry and then they acknowledge it and then the user can set up things like white lists of numbers they don't want recorded. So I don't want my calls to my wife recorded but I don't mind calls to my boss being recorded. Okay, that's the agreement we've made. Right? Um, likewise SMSs and things like that can all be captured as well. You can turn that on and off. Sometimes as well you might just want to record certain calls so you want to flip the device on and off for the recording. That flexibility is there too. For redundancy as well, some customers have multiple recorders on their site, so they have resilient recorders, <coughs> so your primary and secondary DDI numbers that you can add in here. So you can have multiple DDI numbers you might be wanting to phone up, just in case one of the recorders go down or a certain channel goes down. And some of our clients, they're obviously spread across the, across the UK, they're spread across the globe. They've got multiple recorders in lots of different sites that they can phone up from their devices. And likewise, if I was lucky enough to get a trip to America, which I haven't so far, or a trip to Australia where we have offices, um, then I could roam to the local recorder there. Okay, so SMS capture, we've done the audio capture, very straightforward. When we do send an SMS from our device, we don't actually send another SMS back to the recorder, we just send a piece of data which is fully encrypted which then you can search on. If you're down in the tube and things like that, and you just send a text and there's no data just as you're walking down, it'll buffer up and it'll send it when you come back up to, to ground level. And the good thing about this is it's all developed by Redbox. When you come to us and talk to us about your recording, we're just going to ask you what you want to record. There's going to be no premium for recording mobiles as we've seen in the market. It's going to be how many lines do you want to record, how many extensions, how many hot desk users, how many agents, how many mobiles. It's very simple for us to then build you a nice model and a good, a good effective commercial model. And the good thing is as well is the licenses are portable. So you can move them around the different mobile users. So it's very flexible in that way. And a lot of people, I've said, I've said that most people are deploying a mixed environment. Some people have come to us who just want mobile recording, they just want a quick effective solution. So we have a hosted platform that customers can use. So we can deploy the application to the mobiles and they'll use our data center 
or our recorders sit, and they'll browse into the to our recorders and look at their data. And all the data is kept in separate little storage areas, so everyone's data is secure, so they can all log in and check it themselves. So I go on to the demo now. Um, I just put my phone in so you can see how it actually works. Over so you can see. So this is my BlackBerry. Okay, so if I fire up the application, you can see it pop up there. So that's the actual application on my BlackBerry. Then I can switch the recording on and off as I feel. Um, so if I then call Tony. Okay, what you're going to see is it set the first leg up of the call, which will go straight to the recorder. So it's dialing the recorder now. It sets up the call to the recorder, and then the second number it's going to call is going to call Tony. So there you go, the recorder's on hold, and now I'm calling Tony. So, Tony, you want to answer that? Hi, Richard. Hi, mate. How are you doing? Yep. Get me a cheese sandwich. Okay. <laughs> All right. <coughs> Okay, so that's all recorded. And to view that call, you then simply go to your, your quantify interface, search for your calls. And those are all my calls there. If I want to replay any of the calls at any particular time, then I just double click on them. And that's that call that Tony and I just had being replayed there. Okay. Got a bit of silence there because that's the period where the call's been set up. Hi mate, how you doing? There you go. <laughs> Alright. So next safe in front of it there. <laughs> um, the, sa the same happens with the outbound call flow. So it's the same call set up. So I would make a call when a user calls me puts the call on hold and then it goes directly to the recorder, sets up that channel and then comes back. Okay? Sorry, what does the user, the, the caller hear while it's setting up that call? Yeah, it depends on the carrier. Um, some of them will play a tone, um, some of them will be uh, just a period of silence um, before it makes the connection. So it all depends which carrier you're using. Okay? Is there any events to change that? It's quite long. Things to do, it's quite a hassle. I, uh, I haven't we're got talking through. my phone, yeah, my phone's not working. I mean, it, it seems to be almost quite a stumbling block. Um, we've deployed it in like quite a few places at the moment. <coughs> um, the, I guess the longest delay you're going to get is on an incoming call uh, because when you're setting up an outgoing call, you're going to get set up to the recorder and then you're going to go straight out and you're just going to have all of your calls set up. So you get a little delay while it sets up to there. And that can be anywhere from sort of one second, but it can be as long as sort of four or five seconds, yeah. Um, and that's the same with every type of solution that's there for recording of the devices at the moment. Because you've got to go to an external recorder. There's no way we can get anything on these devices to actually record it like that. There's, there's also some legislation about you're allowed to record calls as long as you tell people you're doing it. Yeah, that, that went away around two years ago and there was a big liberalisation of being able to record calls. What you must do is make best endeavours to tell people that you're recording their calls. So that can be either an announcement through an IVR system, or it can be some publication in a contract or information on your website. Don't you, on the DPA, have to tell people why you're recording Yeah. Because you can't use it and they just live why unless you've told them that's all. That's right, yeah. So that's where you make that publication on your website or on your IVR function, which we all know is training and mon quality monitoring purposes, which can cover a broad range of reasons. I understand that, but it's going to be, sort of, I think people will be uncomfortable with it, just genuinely. With our salespeople having their clients like that and having it explained to them, I think it'd be a very, I think there's a slight disconnect about what is real life and what you're trying to achieve. Uh, in which way, in the way <coughs> just the call's just actually recorded or? The way in which the call's recorded is one thing, if you've got a game of tone and so on, someone has got back for the first time and they haven't gone to your website, which is really like, mm. 
um, and that having to be explained at all by the way we're avoiding all the calls. So you don't actually have to do that when you're answering a call. So if you're mobile, if you're doing any recording at the moment, um, then you need to announce it, and it's the same with the mobiles. Um, as long as you're putting it on your website, um, or where it's in form, some form of contract that you've signed with the customer, and that's enough. So when, when I answer the call, so if a client calls me and I'm, I'm recording all my calls, I don't have to tell them every time that I'm recording their calls, because it's on our website. No, no, no I totally understand it. I yeah. completely get what you're trying yeah. to do. Okay. But there is sort of like, there's a disconnect between reality and what we're trying to achieve. I think it's a great idea to record the calls for all the right reasons, and not just mm -hmm. for snooping and God knows what. Yeah, yeah. But I do think that that mechanism needs to be enhanced in some way to make it seamless, almost instantaneous. I mean, you, you've kind of that up, Yeah, yeah. I mean, there is a delay, and, and that's what we're trying to get over is that, you know, that that's why I've given the demonstration is so you can see there's a slight delay. We have to make that connection. And, that, you know, that's the same with all the different methodologies that, uh, that are there. Um, there's another methodology called um, anchoring, um, which I'll go on to now. And, and again, what happened, the difference between that and what I've just shown you, the application on the blackboard, um, is that all of your calls are then going to get sent to a mobile intercept gateway. Okay? And with things like um, Apple iPhone, um, we, can't, we can't do anything with the operating system on an Apple iPhone. Okay, that's totally done. We've spoke to Steve Wozniak, people like that. Um, they won't let us touch it. And, and we had 25,000 customers out in the city who needed this by November the 14th. Now, there's mobile phone, iPhones out there that we needed to record. And we said, we're having this problem. We've been to RIM and said, we're having this problem. We've got this delay. Um, and then, and, you know, RIM are doing things about it to give an announcement and things like that. Um, but Apple wouldn't do anything. Okay, very difficult to get them to, to move. So with things like um, the Apple iPhone, you have to use this mobile intercept <coughs> gateway to record their calls. And again, you know, I'm to totally up, up front and honest, again, there is going to be a delay um, because we've got to make this connection to a point where we can intercept the call. Right. With the mobile intercept gateway, you do get an announcement um, when you're making that inbound call. So, so that kind of answers the, the question there is that you'll get if you want that announcement, the way to do it with, is with the mobile intercept gateway. It's just a different method of recording. Okay. No, it's, it's all good stuff. I mean, if the legislation has changed two years ago, I wasn't aware of that. That's fine. Yeah. And that, that's all good. BlackBerry, if we're moving away from BlackBerry. All our clients are moving yeah. away from BlackBerry. BlackBerry, as such, is just those diving down. It's going to be more about the active sync devices, so the Apple's and the yeah. others are going to be connected. Absolutely. And we've got both, both sides of that sort of covered now. We've got the mobile intercept gateway, which will do absolutely any device out there. Um, and we've got people who prefer this device, or the, the BlackBerry or Android devices, we can give them the application, so we can do that conference-based recording that way. Okay, so kind of, I'm, I know I've used quite a bit of my time there with, um, with the questions, but um, what I'd just like to get over today is that this is, the mobile recording is just one element of a wider deployment. So with the hot desking, which Lisa mentioned, with the teleworker, so flexible working when I can work at home, and also when I'm roving around, which I do obviously a lot of the time, and I want to switch that on because I'm having a conversation with a client, we can record all of those using Quantify, and then we can apply the different sets of business <coughs> tools to help you hit the performance levels you want and spot the trends that you want. Okay? Okay, that's me. Okay, thank you. Any right. questions for Richard? I'm going to be here all day, so if you've any more... One quick question. Sure. Um, you said, or well, you indicated that you can edit a whitelist on the phone. Yeah. Does that not um, negate the level the FSA regulations in that yeah. you, know, you know, a trader, yeah, yeah. If, unless there's an audit trail, is going to be able to put a number into his whitelist so it doesn't get recorded, but make the call and actually, then reinstate it. No, but it has to be authorised. Um, first of all, right. whether you actually see the application is up to the administrator. So a user themselves could, could actually not even have that interface on their phone, but it would be recorded in the calls. 
So that's how we lock it down for people who are FSA regulated. They have no control over those features or functions. That's all controlled by the central administrator. So then that then can be audited, audited by the compliance officer, and he can say, how are we locking this phone down? And then they can go and say, well, they, they've got no access to the application. It's all controlled from here. Here are the audit logs of what's happened over the last 12 months. So yeah, for FSA, FSA is very tight on what we can actually issue down to them. Even the whitelist is a request from the firm, it's not actually stored in the firm. So the administrator has to implement that, that uh, number to be not recorded. So if they decide it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be. So, so <coughs> yes, because the, the slide suggested that editing the whitelist was, a, was a, an option on the phone application. If we deliver it down to the user, then, then that's an option that they can have. But for, for a lot of clients, we don't actually deliver that down to them, um, especially the FSA regulator. I would imagine it, it, it really depends upon the environment that you work for within. Clearly, if it's uh, an FSA regulator, you don't pass that control back to the user. No, absolutely. Yeah. It's completely the same. If you're roaming um, abroad, are you in effect making two phone calls? Yeah, you're always making two calls because you've got to connect back to a recorder. Um, in the mobile intercept gateway, you're actually making a call in and a call out, so you need two two trunks, okay, or two SIP channels uh, to connect to. Um, well, but it's always yeah. Because obviously you're making two phone calls. One's a conference, one's actually a phone call. Yeah. What happens if that call comes call between the gateway gets dropped? It's flexible, um, so we can decide what to do with in that instance. Um, for FSA regulations, if they're making a call out, and with the FSA everything has to be recorded. So if that connection to the recorder drops, we can intelligently monitor it and say, if the recorder drops, the call drops. Also, if, if you're making a call and you can't get connection to a recorder, we can say, what happens in that instance? Do I connect the call or do I not connect the call? Okay. So we can program it up to do exactly what we want.